Want to do a transition effect like this one as if you're entering into another world? Follow me into this tutorial to find out! The first thing you want to do is actually place the other world first into the timeline and then place the video on the front. In my case, it's this computer with a green screen. For better fitting into my specific video here, I'll add some zoom to it in order to get some more immersion into the transition. Do any adjustments related to dimensions here in the zoom part before we start everything. You can also try disabling and enabling one of the tracks to have an idea of how the video will look like in the end. Be sure to make both the videos the same length as well. To make that, I'll decrease the length of the video I have in the background right here. After you're satisfied with the results, enable again the two or more videos in your timeline, select both of the videos in the timeline, right-click on it, and then click on New Fusion Clip. Now we go to the Fusion tab. Do not worry, we will not do anything complex. It's pretty easy to do everything. In my window here, you can see that I have no idea which video is Media In 1 and Media In 2. To solve that, I just click on the first Media In 1 with the right button and select View here, and go to the left view. You can also just type 1 to do the same process. Now that we know which video we are, we can just rename it using the right button or just pressing F2. I'll rename it Woman and Computer for the other one, for better identification during the process. Now, I need to be sure that the woman is in the background and the computer is in the foreground. To do the effect, just pass the mouse cursor on these triangles to see which one is connected. Now, let's click on the foreground video here and press spacebar plus shift to open this window right here. In this window, type for Delta Keyer. Let me bring this to the right to better organize. Now, let's click on this Delta Keyer here. Some options will appear to us. If this window already appeared to you, great! If not, select this key tab. Now, all you need to do is click in this color extractor and hold the click until you got to the color of your chroma key. In my case, it's this green screen computer. Immediately the effect is applied to the video and you can see the world already. Let's go to the next step. Click on the delta key and click into this polygon icon right here. This rectangle will appear and let me position it here. Also this one? Alright, keeping this organized is very important if you need to do changes later. Keep that in mind. Now, let's go back to this rectangle. It is connected to the effect mask right here in blue. We need to change that to the garbage mat here. We need to click in the middle of the line here and drag into the garbage mat right here. Now, it's very important to make note of this part right here. If you have the free version of DaVinci Resolve, you unfortunately will have to make the selection frame by frame of the hand of this individual right here, which can take a lot of time to complete. To make an example, I'll do the very first one right here. A pro tip is keep changing the viewing size window right here as much as you feel comfortable doing so. The next step is just selecting every single one of the dots concerning the finger, and then the hand, and finally the arm. One more pro tip that I can give you to better make the selection frame by frame is actually keep an eye in the frame count right here, to make sure you're in the next frame and didn't skip any. To transition between the frames, first click on the polygon rectangle and use the directional arrows of your keyboard to navigate between a frame by time, rather than just selecting them at random. After that, I spent an eternity doing the selection of all the frames that were necessary. The last tip is that when you're doing a small amount of frames, let's say less than 10, you can keep this onion icon activated. If you have a lot of them, like my case, it's better for viewing if you disable them, but I'll keep it enabled. Keep doing the selection until the moment you think the guy or girl in the video is being pulled. When you get there, click in the Delta Cure this time and do that shortcut that we learned in the beginning, spacebar plus shift, and then search for transform. Now the magic happens. We will do a keyframe related to the zoom level of the image that we have, to create the pulling effect. To do that, click in this diamond here the exact moment the man will be pulled. Now, go somewhere you think the pull has already happened. Increase the value of the zoom right here, and that's pretty much it. 
We have a problem though. It looks a lot like a PowerPoint effect. Let's replay that. Oh my god, it's so bad. To change that, we need to click in splines here. And make sure you're in the transform one here enabled. I'll drag these circles here until they show the entire zoom values that I have. The PowerPoint Microsoft like zoom is because it's pretty much linear. To change that, you can click in these squares in the beginning and in the end of the transition and click and drag these other squares that appeared. Do this until you get a nice and smooth curve for both down and upward lines. Let's see how the video is right now. Oh, that's much better. To make things even better, we can also try to click into the transform rectangle here once more. Do the shortcut space plus shift and search for blur. Now, let's choose this directional blur here. Let me drag this to the right one last time. Now we click in the directional blur rectangle here and select the type zoom, perfect for what we want for the video, which is a zoom effect supposing you're being pulled. In this section here, you can either increase or decrease the value to create an effect that you're being pulled or you are getting out of something really fast. For our video, I'll make it positive, create the pull effect. For now, I'll leave it at zero. Click again at splines and you see that nothing changes. To solve that, you need to create a starting point to the effect. To do that, you need to go to the beginning of the transition line here, click in the diamond, supposing you still are with the directional blur selected. Now, in this window here, go to the end of the transition effect we did earlier and increase the value of the directional blur as much as you wish to. To make things interesting, I'll give it the maximum value. You can, as like the transition effect, click in these squares in the beginning and in the end to make a smoother effect, as much as you wish. With everything that we did, our video is finally ready. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something today.